television. It's a screen in your house that you stare at. Sometimes it entertains you, sometimes it terrifies you, sometimes it educates you, and sometimes it throws shit at your eyes until they roll back and you redirect them towards the remote control and the quickest button press that will remove you from this never-ending nightmare of dross. The television, in its channel broadcasting form anyway, has a lot less eyes on it than it did in the 1980s, even though there's more of us and we're spending more time looking at screens than ever. As we've discovered in the previous videos, which you can see up at the top there, television programmes were so popular in the 80s that most popular programmes and indeed semi-popular programmes had a video game based on them certainly on that most British of computers, the ZX Spectrum. Seriously, even this show had a video game. And this one. And yes, even this one. Here is the fifth trio of televisual treats turned to vaguely interactive computer programmes presented in less colours than an unlit cave full of goths. Weirdly, this time I've accidentally selected three titles that begin with the letter B. So sort of think of this as an episode of Sesame Street with less puppets uh, and more kind of directed at middle-aged people instead of children. The TV show that launched Theresa May into stardom. Strong and stable. Buck Rogers in the 25th century was based on the iconic character of comics and cinematic serials first conceived in 1928. The show, produced by Universal, ran for two series between 1979 and 1982 and was put together by the same team as Battlestar Galactica, often using the same props and sets. The storyline goes that Buck was a NASA pilot who flew into space in the futuristic year of 1987 and got frozen thanks to some downright shoddy work by the technicians in charge of his life support systems. And lo, he is frozen thanks to the gases preserving him through a whole nuclear war until he rises once more in 2491. There, he becomes an ace pilot against the forces of Princess Ardala, in the first series anyway. The second series deviated heavily from the first and lost a ton of viewers, eventually getting cancelled. Around the same time that a Buck Rogers themed revolving restaurant was opened in Liverpool. That didn't last either. Oops. Buck Rogers, the computer game, is actually a conversion of a very old Sega arcade machine from 1983, the second ever licensed game after a 1976 game based on the bloody Fonz from Happy Days. It was an on-rails shooter, indeed one of the first of its kind, something Sega of course would have a lot of luck with throughout the 80s. The conversion published by US Gold in 1985, casts you as Buckethy, as he flies in between the electrified towers and blasts numerous baddies, including this charmingly happy space of a look at him, what a lovely little chap. My, what lovely colours flashing before our eyes here. Red and pink, huh? Hmm. It controls fine, and as an early proto version of like a Star Fox or Sega's own Space Harrier, it's okay, I guess. It's just okay. No, it's not. It's dull, 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 dull. It's not aged badly or anything like that either. I think it is just dull. Especially as Sinclair user and your Spectrum, the precursor to your Sinclair, awarded the game two stars out of five each. And they're absolutely right. I could feel my hair growing a millionth of an inch as I was so bored. Oh, boring. Midi, midi, midi. Benny Hill, what a cheeky chappy. Look at him dart about. <laughs> Look at all this rape threat. Hilarious light entertainment. 
Life was different in the 50s, 60s, 70s and 80s when Benny was on the telly. Benny is a man from a different time. A time where the Benny Hill show, at its peak in 1977, drew 21.10 million viewers. Now, in modern terms, that's the viewership for England's victory against Tunisia in the last World Cup, or Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's wedding. And this, remember, was for a heavily innuendo-laden skit show about a quirky dude with the horn and Daphne from Frasier. Not only that, it was a highly successful export, airing in 97 countries, which is more than I can name. And two of them would be Solomon Islands and Vanuatu. Vanuatu? That's still quite a lot of countries, if those are the two I think of. So what kind of game could you make about this deviant goon? Who would have guessed that it would be a survival horror? It is sort of, although you don't kind of do anything survival horror but it is scary. Uh, the tension you get from being chased by this, this lady. Imagine like Alien Isolation, but instead of being Alan Ripley's daughter, you're a late middle-aged sex deviant and instead of the unfeeling xenomorph alien your nemesis is a frumpy woman who relentlessly pursues you for stealing her underwear terrified yet no well look at her face look at it of course it's not a survival horror but it certainly has that tension as the justifiably upset woman pursues our creepola protagoni at speed across multiple screens. It's not only buxom women, but farmers and the popo in pursuit of Benjamin Hill in later levels. Benny slams across the levels, slamming into walls and lampposts with slapstick abandon in a surprisingly addictive, simplistic 1984 affair from DK Tronics. The attribute clash suppressing giant sprite work is from trapdoor programmer and all round genius Don Priestley, and he once again turns a seemingly difficult show into a brilliant concept and ultimately a really good game about an absolute sex case. Interesting fact, Blockbusters presenter Bob Holness was one of the very first people in the world to play James Bond in a 1955 radio production of Moonraker. Also, another interesting fact is that this is the best intro of any game show ever. Look at this, it's like Blade Runner, but Rutger Hauer and Harrison Ford have been replaced by hexagons. Look at these nerds ruin that coolness by dad dancing at the end of the episode. But the show itself, which we should probably talk about, ran from 1983 to 1995 on ITV and Sky One before making a few comebacks here and there. The basic premise was that contestants have to complete the path across the board or down it. As you can see, it's a lot easier to be going down as there's only a line of four to complete as opposed to five. The, uh, the ruck of that is, is that uh, you get to be in a team if you go across the board, which is brilliant because if you do terribly, you've got someone else to blame when it all goes wrong and your dreams are broken and you look like a dick on the telly. So what about the game? Well, I played Mike Reed's Pop Quiz in an early video and boy did I struggle with the questions sending around the pop charts of 1989 and before. I don't know a great deal about Baltimore's Tarzan Boy and nor should I. I do however know that animals are placed in quarantine and a trot is somewhere between a walk and a run. And that is why Maxin's 1984 release 
Blockbuster succeeds far better. It's one basic bitch. Did I say that right? How do you do, fellow kids? What? But it's great fun in two players. You each get a buzzer key and must be quick to blast that button with your finger to get your answer in. It even detects when you spell a word incorrectly and lets you have another go. It works in the same way as the TV programme where you have to complete a line of trivia questions to win, although it is missing the gold rush, which you get if you buy a special edition of the game. Bloody downloadable content. Even when it's non-downloadable and you have to go to the shop and buy it, that's even worse. Um, there was actually a sequel that came a little bit later by a different production team that had Bob's lovely face in it. Look at his face. This is the one I'm talking about today, and it's fine. It's pretty good. Um, it's, as I say, it looks very basic, but it is uh, an enjoyable experience, even today. It doesn't matter that it looks like horse shite. It's actually pretty hard to choose a winner out of this lot. Well, except Buck Rogers, as that was cack. Um, I will have to give it to Benny Hill, I think. Uh, Dom Priestley again works his magic and I think the only way to celebrate uh, Benny Hill winning is to do one of his oh so famous closing credit sequences. Let's hope it doesn't get copyright striked. It's alright, don't make any money from them anyway. Haha, -ha. bye for now.